Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. When processing of the base resin is completed, the curing cast is returned to the articulator and the degree of processing change which may have occurred during the flasking and curing operation is determined. Correcting these processing errors is accomplished before the appliance is separated from the curing cast. Dimensional changes due to the processing of acrylic resin and dimensional instability of the wax used in setting the teeth manifest themselves by preventing complete closure of the articulator. These errors may be noted in both the position and prominence of the supplied teeth and in the resin saddle. The degree of change is evidenced by the openings in the occlusal stop areas. Areas of interference are located with articulating ribbon. The adjustments are made with appropriate small stones. When the adjustments are complete, and the occlusal stops once again firmly seated, the appliance may be removed from the curing cast. All excess resin in the area adjacent to the abutment tooth must be relieved so that no pressure is exerted on the free gingival collar. The resin is reduced to the metal finishing line on the lingual bar. Excessive resin that may have been processed in and around the retentive clasp can readily be removed using a Moore's disc with a fine abrasive. The overextensions and flash of acrylic at the peripheries can best be removed with a handheld rotating instrument. No attempt should be made to trim the periphery with an engine lathe. The base periphery is trimmed and contoured to the outline dictated by the impression registration of the edentulous ridge. Lingual surfaces are made concave from the rounded periphery to the cervical portion of the denture teeth to provide tongue room and aid in the retention of the denture. The distal portion of the lingual flange should be contoured toward the edentulous ridge so as to permit a minimum of interference to tongue movement. Buckle surfaces are also made concave. This contour is in harmony with the musculature, will preserve the periphery and prevent food impaction. Any sharp edges on the base should be trimmed and then polished to a rounded form. The finished base should exhibit a smooth, rounded, polished periphery. The tissue contacting surface should be smooth and properly formed to the resin metal finish line. Any processing defects or nodules are removed. The distal and lingual borders of the base are rounded and polished. The buccal concavity, cervical to the replacement tooth, should extend through the forward section of the base periphery. The anatomy of the replacement tooth that was destroyed by occlusal grinding during the setting and adjustment procedures can now be reformed. Care is exercised to maintain centric occlusal contacts.
The finished prosthesis is inserted and the occlusal rest seats are inspected for proper adaptation to the abutment teeth. They should seat completely and demonstrate continuity with the occlusal surfaces. The occlusion is checked visually. It is reasonable to assume that the occlusal relationship at this stage will be premature on the replacement teeth because the opposing occlusion has reverted to an unsupported state following the occlusal path record. Any gross prematurities beyond the expected degree of change should be determined and removed at this time. Two strips of 28 gauge green casting wax or a similar wax used bilaterally is an effective method of determining points of excessive contact. The occlusion is checked in centric as well as in eccentric excursions to detect any interferences. Premature and excessive contacts will be demonstrated by perforation or thinning of the wax. Interfering areas may be easily located by placing the wax record on the prosthesis and outlining the areas of interference. Any reduction that may feather or sharpen the base peripheries will result in a need for repolishing and rounding of these edges. The tissue contacting surface of the bases may then be coated with a pressure indicating paste to observe the stress pattern at rest and under occlusal loading. A check of the occlusion with wax shows the wide simultaneous contacts achieved. Slight posterior premature contact will be evident until a period of function has been allowed and the appliance has settled to its final seated position. Articulating paper is used to demonstrate the points of occlusal contact. Contact of the tuberosity with the base resin can be readily detected with indicator paste. And any areas of overloading of the edentulous underlying ridge structures can be demonstrated as well. Necessary relief is accomplished and the altered areas are repolished. Pressure indicator paste is reapplied to the reduced portions of the saddle. The appliance is reinserted and jaw movement encouraged to determine the accuracy of the previous alteration. The degree of posterior occlusal opening is noted for further evaluation. The relationship of the base periphery to the adjacent soft tissue is inspected for areas that might require further adjustment. Peripheral areas involved in the adjustment are recontoured and polished. The appliance is now checked for adequate retention. A check bite shows that the reduction of the saddles is adequate and there is a uniform contact of the occlusal elements. Following a period of at least 24 hours, the patient returns and the seating of the restoration and the occlusion is again evaluated. At this time, the bases should be properly related to the underlying ridge structures 
and the occlusion should be in correct centric relation. All occlusal rests should be firmly seated into the recesses on the abutment teeth. The supporting structures are carefully examined for areas of irritation which would result from pressure or roughness of any portion of the prosthesis. Minor color changes in the edentulous ridge structures may be expected as a result of the premature posterior occlusion. An occlusal wax record is again secured and any remaining posterior interferences eliminated. Before dismissal, the patient is instructed on the care of his prosthesis and remaining natural teeth. A regime of oral hygiene must be established. The denture should be brushed with a dentifrice to remove debris and clean by soaking in a solvent cleaning solution for 15 minutes daily. Periodic examinations to maintain oral health is mandatory. An appointment within a week of delivery is made to further observe the patient's tolerance of the prosthesis and make any final adjustments. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.